Coming up, join me for a tour of a hidden gem near Barcelona. Don't miss out on this unique adventure. Today, I had the chance to visit the stunning Castel de Fels Castle, an incredible fortress perched high on a hill, offering one of the most breathtaking views of the surrounding area. The weather couldn't have been better, it was one of those perfect, clear sunny days, the kind that makes exploring an ancient site like this all the more magical. To reach the castle, there's a bit of a hike up the hill, nothing too strenuous, but enough to give you that satisfying sense of adventure as you climb higher. And the reward? Absolutely stunning views, from up here on the rooftop terrace, you can see all the way from Park Gareth, with its lush greenery, to the skyline of Barcelona off in the distance, and of course, the Mediterranean stretching out to the south. It's a view that really makes you appreciate just how special this place is. The castle itself isn't huge, but that's part of its charm. It's intimate, yet full of history. Every corner you turn, there's something to discover, a glimpse into the past that reminds you of how many stories this place must have witnessed. So if you find yourself in Castel de Fels, I highly recommend making the trip up here. It may be a bit of a climb, but trust me, it's well worth every step for the incredible experience and those unforgettable views. Sometimes, the best views come from the most unexpected places. Step into the world of pirates and history at the Castel de Fels with an immersive self-guided audio tour on your phone, expertly crafted by a top-rated storyteller. As you wander through this iconic landmark, you'll be captivated by fascinating tales woven together through an award-winning narrative concept. Explore the impressive interactive exhibition on piracy, where history comes alive through engaging audio-visuals. Picture yourself on the deck of a pirate ship, navigating through its cabin, and even conversing with the ship's captain. In Castel de Fels, it's more than just stories, you'll test your aim with cannons, strategize to defend the coast, plan daring pirate raids, and even don costumes to fully embrace the spirit of the age. It's a fun way to spend family time here.
Let's now step inside the castle and delve into its rich history, a history filled with fascinating tales. Originally constructed to defend the Carolingian Empire's frontier from nearby Muslim territories, particularly the Caliphate of Cordoba, the fortress was first documented in the 10th century, along with the former parish church of St. Mary, which is within its outer wall. Perched on a hill to the northeast of the modern town, the castle complex includes not only the keep but also a church, outbuildings, and a cemetery, all surrounded by a curtain wall. The site has a long history, with archaeological evidence showing the presence of a Laetani settlement dating back to the 3rd century BC and a Roman villa from the 1st to the 6th century AD. The first written mention of the castle dates to 967 AD, and by the 14th century, a fortified house with a strong defensive wall stood on the hill. The church, too, was fortified during this period. However, most of the current structure was built in the 16th century, a response to the growing power of the Ottoman Empire. By the 19th century, the castle had fallen into disrepair, though the church remained in use as the local parish. A dark chapter in the castle's history occurred in 1893 when a young baker murdered the parish priest and his niece, an event that led to the killer's execution outside the castle walls two years later. Afterward, the castle was bought by a wealthy Barcelonan banker, who restored it and added decorative crenellations. During the Spanish Civil War, the castle was used as a prison camp by the international brigades, becoming infamous for torture and executions. The castle stands on a 59-meter high hill northeast of the town center, offering a commanding view of the coastline. The hill is terraced, particularly on its eastern and southern sides, and its summit is covered with vegetation. The fortress is dominated by a high, circular tower, surrounded by smaller towers and several buildings, including a church and residential areas. On the southern side, you'll find a partially fortified church, the rectory, and a cemetery. The keep, composed of two main buildings, sits on the west side. The eastern part is constructed from red sandstone from bays, while the western part has plaster-coated masonry, giving it a beige hue. The entire complex is enclosed by a fortified wall that has been modified over time. The main gate, located on the northern side of the bailey, is purely decorative and dates from 1897. Archaeological exploration below the castle has revealed evidence of ancient Iberian and Roman settlements. The hill was first inhabited by the Laetani, who lived there between the 3rd and 1st centuries BC. A Roman villa, dating from the 1st century BC to the 6th century AD, was also discovered. One notable find was a funerary monument dedicated to Caius Trochina Synectimus, a priest of the imperial cult, who likely owned the villa. In the 10th century, the monastery of San Cugat, under the direction of Count Sunyer of Barcelona, built the Church of Saint Mary on the hill. By 967, both the church and a castle, referred to as Castrum Felix, Fortunate Castle, were mentioned in documents, though no remnants of this early structure have been found. The church, rebuilt in the 11th century in a Romanesque style, still stands today. It was fortified during the 14th and 15th centuries, reflecting the increased need for defenses due to regional instability. The earliest surviving part of the castle, a truncated circular tower, also dates to the 14th century. With the Ottoman Empire expanding its control over the Mediterranean, King Philip II of Spain ordered the construction of coastal fortifications. The castle was rebuilt in red sandstone, and by 1590, the imposing southwest tower was completed. In 1893, the castle was the scene of a notorious double murder when a young baker killed the parish priest and his niece in a violent attack. The killer was executed outside the castle walls in 1895, an event that drew a crowd of 8,000 onlookers. In the late 19th century, the castle was purchased by banker Manuel Girona, who hired the architect Enrique Saunier to restore it. Gothic-style windows and doors were added, as well as decorative crenellations. The restoration was completed in 1897. During the Spanish Civil War, the castle became a prison camp for the Republican International Brigades. Prisoners accused of indiscipline were held here, and many were executed or tortured. In 1988, ownership of the castle passed to the Casteldefels Municipal Council, and a restoration project was launched the following year. During this process, a Roman monument was discovered, further enriching the historical significance of the site.
Thank you so much for joining me on this special tour of the hidden gem, Castel de Fels, near Barcelona. I hope you enjoyed the experience as much as I did. If you ever find yourself in the area, I highly recommend taking the time to explore it further, it's well worth the visit. Safe travels and looking forward to seeing you on future adventures.